another episode of Wicked Easy Cooking. My name is Chef Colin Roach, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit out of the ordinary, a little bit different. Because I've had a lot of you, you know, viewers, subscribers out there write to me, and, and you've seen my dogs in my different videos, right? You've seen Boston, who's since passed on, but he was in a few of my earlier videos, Golden Retriever. And now our new dog, which we had just about a year, is Madeline. We call her Maddie. She's an English Golden Retriever, which means she's white. You've seen her in some of my other videos. So today we're doing something for dogs out there. We're not going to be cooking for uh, ourselves. We're going to make wicked easy peanut butter pumpkin dog bones. They're much better uh, than the ones that you can buy in the store because you control what you put in there. They're also apparently delicious, um, not only from Maddie's point of view, but I've tried them too. These truly are Scooby snacks, right? Good for Scooby and good for Shaggy because you can control what you put in them. So I have the recipe here, simple. You can make adaptations to it if you'd like, put other things in it if you want. And I'm gonna post this at the end of the video and I'll also put it in the description show notes below that you can just print out if you'd like to try it. So this one makes about, uh, again, depends on the size of your dog bone, but I've got about 60 to 80 out of this recipe. So it's about, I give a couple dog bones a day if I'm not doing some training activities with the dog. So, you know, probably last me about a month, a little less. Well, you could double the batch if you'd like. They last a long time. So it has pumpkin puree. You know, you pick this up in the store or wherever. It's pretty you know, easy, especially around the holidays, you know, around Thanksgiving, Christmas and stuff. You see this on sale. So you can even get a few cans and store it up if you find yourself making this recipe a lot. I just grabbed this one here. And what I like about it is this it's pure ingredients, pumpkin. That's it. There's no added preservatives. There's no sugars and salts. So again, we're controlling the ingredients. The other thing is peanut butter, right? Buy any old peanut butter. I just bought some, you know, no-name brand from our local grocery store, but you could buy the fancy stuff if you want, but you don't have to. You know, you just you know, save money, but you know, again, it's, it's pretty pure. I like this one too as well because it's just roasted peanuts and some oil and they do put a little bit of salt in it so you know you got to watch sometimes they'll put other preservatives in it and then the other thing two eggs it's going to be kind of our glue our binder and then, okay and the last ingredient that you're going to have in there is some whole wheat flour you know i like the whole wheat because it's a little bit more natural i guess you could use all purpose i've never used that or bread flour in my recipe i always use whole wheat now it's out because you know what's going on i guess in the world a lot of people baking i'm not sure so i had to buy um, organic, which is a, drove the price up a little bit, but again, you get what you can take out there. And this is King Arthur, so this is a really good one, so this is going to be a good batch. Okay, and that's it. So what we're going to do is, and I'm just going to read it to you, you're going to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Then you're going to get a sheet pan. Now I'm going to put uh, parchment paper on it, which you can or you cannot, but try to get something that's non-slip, you know, like a Teflon type pan. You don't want to spray it because we don't want to add grease into these biscuits or these cookies, uh, but at the same time, you don't want them sticking to the pan. So I'll talk more about that. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna mix the ingredients in our mixer. So what we're gonna do first is in the thing, with our paddle attachment, we're gonna just put in first the um, peanut butter, the pumpkin, and the eggs. And we're gonna mix that all up first. And then we're slowly gonna add in our flour. And our whole wheat flour is about two and a half cups I'm going to slowly put in to start and then I'm going to have another half a cup in reserve so as I look at it depending on how moist or how much oil is in the peanut butter and how moist is in the pumpkin puree we might need to add a little bit so it's not too sticky so we can roll it out and if not I'm going to use the other half cup to put on my bench here when I do roll it out and then we're just going to cut those okay we'll put them in an oven it takes about 20 to 30 minutes depending on the size you cut it out as well as you know, the, uh, the type of oven that you have. You know, if it's a little bit smaller, if it's a convection oven. So you have to monitor that. But it's, say, about a half an hour. Let them cool completely, they're good. You know, and then that's what I'll show you though. So let's get started. Okay, so now as it says in the recipe, in our electric mixer bowl, whatever mixer that you happen to have, we're gonna put the pumpkin puree, which is two thirds of a cup for this batch, which is about a half a 15 ounce can. So if you want to double the batch, use the whole can. If you're just making this batch, just think it's about a half a can. That'll give you the two-thirds cup. So we'll put that into our mixing bowl. 
And then we're gonna add in our peanut butter. Now the peanut butter, I like using the smooth, you know, the creamy peanut butter. You could certainly use chunky if you want. Or but what'll happen is it makes it a little harder when you're rolling it out. You get those bumps in there. So I like using the smooth or the creamy. Now this one says about a quarter of a cup. So that's two ounces or four tablespoons. So I don't even have to measure it. I'm gonna make that two tablespoons. And I'm gonna make that two tablespoons. A little extra peanut butter, a little less, not gonna really hurt you. Okay, so we'll put that in there. <clears throat> and then we're just gonna add in our eggs. Two large eggs is what it says here. So I have those here. I'm just gonna break those and put them into our mixing bowl. Get all the whites in there. Perfect. And now we're just going to put that onto our stand here. And then again, the paddle that we'll use, hook that up. We'll start it out kind of slow, raise it up, and then we're gonna just speed it up. So you might not be able to hear. So I'm just gonna start slow so I can start incorporating those eggs so it doesn't splash. But once it's pretty incorporated, I'm gonna turn it up. Okay, do this. Do this for one to two minutes until it's, you know, well combined. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm just going to add my flour. So I'll put in here that, you know, you want to add it slowly in. You know, maybe uh, or gradually in. So at the beginning, I can put, you know, a good amount. I got, you're going to put two and a half cups. There's one cup. So I'll kind of start with that whole cup going in there. All right. Put it back up. And we'll start mixing that in slow. Now I'm going to need another cup and a half. Okay, one cup is incorporated. Now I'm going to start that second cup. I'll do about a half. Slow again. Add that other half, a, maybe a quarter of a cup. I don't want to go too fast so it gets incorporated. There, now you may need another half a cup. All right, so it's two and a half cups, and then maybe another cup after that, depending on how wet it is. This looks pretty good, so I'm going to just do a half a cup of my whole wheat flour. Let's move this along. Let me stop and touch that. That's pretty good. I don't know if I'm gonna need this other half cup. Let me take it out and take a look at it. Clean this up a little bit, and then uh, we're gonna roll it out. Okay, so let's take this out and see what we got here. So we'll pull this off and all incorporated here. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, I think this is pretty good. So let's uh, take it out. There's the dough ball. Move that out of our way. Kind of put a little of this flour on the bench. Spread it around. Then what we want to do is we kind of knead the dough three or four times. You know, to kind of bring it together. Make sure it's all mixed. Get some of that bench flour in there so it's not so sticky. I think that's pretty good. Okay, so just to make it easy to work with, I'm gonna cut that two pieces. Again, we'll put a little more of this out. And now we can bring out our rolling pin. <clears throat> We're just gonna roll this out. You wanna do it to about a quarter of an inch. So you can get your ruler out for that, or just kind of guess. I know a quarter of an inch is about just a little bit shy of my nail on my pinky. So I've used that a lot of times, so I just kind of guide it that way. And that's a, a quick way to remember it, you know. Think about how big it is for a knuckle, your first knuckle, your second knuckle. And you can kind of get a guide, and then when you're working with stuff, you know, I'll take out a ruler, you can use that as you know, a guideline to know if you're in the ballpark. So we'll roll this. 
we unroll from the center to the out. Turn it over here. Looks good. All right. I think that is pretty good. You can see the thickness on that. So that's about a quarter of an inch or so. <clears throat> good enough for our dog bone. Now you got to decide what shape you're going to cut it out to. Now you can do big ones, and I've seen, you know, cookie cutters that are in the shape of a dog bone. And they look really cool, but the problem is most of them are too big. I don't want to have big treats for my dog. I'd rather have them small and give them more than one. Especially if I'm doing some training or something with her. You know, wanting her to sit and stuff. I don't want to get her full and, you know, give her all that unwanted calories if needed. So I'd rather do small ones. But for shapes, you can just do something round. Or you could do cookie cutters that you have. So over here, I have some ones that we use when we're really doing cookies. You know, we have some Halloween ones, we have some Easter ones, and there's all different shapes. Here's a little rabbit. I've used that one before. You know, we have a little chick, a little duckling here. A little, well, there's one kind of an ob oblong shape, round. This one here, I think was Halloween. I think this was supposed to be a bat. But I call it a half moon or a Mr. Moon, you know, moon, man in the moon, kind of a face on the side, but could be a wave. So that's a good size that I like to you know, use with Maddie. But if you don't have a cutter, don't worry about it. You could use, you know, a little metal cup, something just to cut it out with. You could technically just use a knife and cut it into, you know, triangles or squares if you wanted to, too. So, you know, make it as fancy as you want. But I find if you have children... You know, if you have kids, children, get them to help. They love this part. You know, just like when they're making cookies, but now they're making cookies for their dog. So get them to pick out some shapes and to try it. So I'm going to do some of these uh, egg ones here. I guess they're egg oblongs. And again, try to get it right up to the edge and as close to each other as you can. Why? Because that will save you from having to re-roll it out and cut again and re-roll it out. You know, try to maximize that space and it will save you some time. Now, as mentioned, you're going to get 70 to 80 of these, you know, maybe 50 if you're using, you know, real big ones, like if I did a lot of these rabbits. But again, I think that's too much, at least for my dog. And it's also going to depend on the size of your dog. You know, Maddie, my dog, is a golden retriever, or English golden retriever. So, you know, she's 60, 70 pounds, you know, but maybe you have a, an Irish wolfhound, you know, it's a couple hundred pounds, or maybe you've got, you know, a little... West Highland Terrier, that's only, you know, 10 pounds or something. So, you know, make the cookies that are appropriate or the size of your cookies that are appropriate for your, your size dog, obviously. And again, you can make big ones and break them in half if you wanted to, but I find they cook up better when they're, you know, kept nice shape and the same thickness. So there we go. I don't know if you can see that and you can see the little pattern in here. So you can see, and then I can just, you know, kind of peel them out. You know, peel the edges, you know, pull the edges back, leaving these shapes in here. Now, when it comes to sheet trays, sheet pans, you want to use a sheet pan. I'm going to use some parchment paper in there, but I don't have to because this type of pan is kind of a non-stick. So, you know, use it. You don't want to, again, spray it with oil or grease it because we don't want these to get greasy. Because we want them to dry out and almost be like a cracker, you know, a cookie for the dog. And then they can leave them out at shelf stable. So, you can use a, you know, a non-stick type pan, or just put a piece of parchment paper if you'd like. And you don't have to worry about, you know, giving a space, uh, you know, when you put them into the pan, because this does not spread. You know, like some cookies, if you're making, I guess, peanut butter cookies, chocolate chip cookies, sometimes they'll spread, so they'll say, leave, you know, of a quarter of an inch. Here, pack them right up to each other. You know, put it up close. It's not going to spread. They will puff a little bit. They do puff up a little bit, but... Um, that's okay. They'll flatten back down as they harden. So put all of these in, as much as you can fit in there, or whatever shape you decide. And then fill up that pan. Have your oven on 350. It's going to take 20 minutes at the shortest amount of time. Now, how you'll know is it starts getting brown around the edges. I often don't even flip them. Sometimes I will. It depends if, I'm, if I remember. You know, maybe halfway through the cooking process when I'm checking them, I'll flip them over because the bottom is going to obviously get a little bit more brown or darker than the top. 
but you don't have to. And then you wait about you know, another 10 minutes on the other side. So if they're big, you cut big ones out, it's gonna take you, the, you know, a good 30 minutes or so, depending on this temperature and how hot your oven is and if it's calibrated. But the smaller ones, you know, little tiny ones, if I was doing like these little moons or bats, you know, they're gonna cook a little bit quicker, so. So anywhere between, I'll put 20 and 30 minutes, somewhere around there. So I have my pan all full. And now I'm just gonna pop them in the oven. Okay, and here is a pan that I cooked earlier. So you can see how they turn out from, you know, the raw dough. And I made just a kind of a squeaky snack one here. These are still a little warm. So when you take them out, obviously don't give them to your dog right away. You know, they're still hot. Plus, they're going to be soft. You know, they're a little bit soft. So let them cool down. And then they will, you know, get hard in there. Now, here's the batch that I did earlier. You know, I did some more. And these ones have already, you know, really gotten cold. And you can see I did some different shapes. Here's those little ducks, those little chickies. And here's those things, I guess they were bats. You know, maybe if they were this way, but I call them like a man in the moon, you know, half face. They got his nose and his eye and his little head there and his chin, but maybe that's what they're supposed to be. I think we even have some rabbits I did in here. We did a few different types. And, um, yeah, there's the rabbit. You can see that one. So again, that may be too big. You know, maybe if you only give them one treat, that's a good size. You know, if you have a really large dog, but if you have a real small dog, you know, maybe cut them around this size, which would probably be, you know, a little more appropriate to them. And as I mentioned, when I'm doing training, I will, you know, put these down and you know, use these, put these in your pocket. And they're pretty hard, so you can do that. And then obviously this dough, you just keep rolling it out. All this part here that I cut off of it, I'm gonna just reform that. You know, put it back kind of into a mass there. Roll that back out to a quarter of an inch. And then just cut more. And as I said, you can maybe get these like little souffle cups. You can cut them out this way. So you can get these little round, you know, more like little biscuits if you want to do it that way, which is what these ones are. So you can see how flat they are. This one puffed up a little bit and didn't unpuff, so that's a little puffier one. But then more like a Scooby snack. So roll those out, keep them cooking about 25 minutes, let them come out, let them cool. And then, not only are they good for your dog, but you can eat them. So a Scooby snack, not only good for Scooby, right? They're also good for Shaggy, because you know what's in these. This just has pumpkin, peanut butter, some eggs, right? And then flour as a binder. If you wanted to put something else in there, like a different spice, you could. Maybe a different herb, you could. If you think that's appropriate for your dog, then you go ahead, but you can eat them yourself. See? Humans can eat them. Now, let me show you a store-bought brand. Now, this is just one brand, Purina. I'm not picking on any brand. You could have milk bones, you could have anything in there. And they're good in a, in a pinch. You know, I've used them before with my dogs. You know, they're easy. Just go pick them up at the store. A little bit more expensive than making them yourself, but you save a lot of time. But just take a look at what's in them. You know, and again, different brands are going to have different ingredients, and I'm sure there's some all-natural ones out there. But just be aware what you're giving to your pet. This one here, wheat flour, just like we used. But then it has beef tallow, right? Beef tallow is the fat of steers, preserved with mixed topper, topperols, wheat, gluten, lecithin, chicken byproduct meal, liver flavor, meat meal, source of lamb flavor, oat hulls, mono and dicalcium phosphate, calcium carbonate, garlic powder, maybe put garlic powder in them, red dye number 40, yellow dye number five, blue dye number one, yellow dye number six, and then it has some other things that I can't even pronounce in there, which are probably some type of stabilizers. So these ones have beef, chicken, lamb, and liver flavors. So I guess, you know, that's good, but I'm not eating one of these, right? So I don't know if it's good. I know my dog eats it, but my dog could probably eat anything. But I know these are good because I've tasted them, right? I know what's in them. 
Maybe I want to put a little garlic powder, a little curry powder, a little something in it that maybe your vet says your dog can eat that would be good for it. So you can do that, but again, proof is in the pudding. So let me bring Maddie over here and see what she says about it. She may not care about whether it's healthy or not, but she cares about, am I gonna get a snack? Maddie, come here, come here. Come here, you want a cookie? You want a cookie? Come on, come on, sit. You like this? You like this? Come here, come on over here. I want them to see you, come here, come here. Come here, come on, come on. Good girl, now here. I'm gonna put you up with the camera. Oh, there's Maddie. Come on, get up. Get up there. See, here's Maddie. And you like the cookies? Here, have a cookie. Was it good, huh? You like those? You're a good girl. You are. So, dog approved. Try some for your for your uh, pups, your pets, and then put it in the comments section if you make them. Let me know how they liked them. Maybe you made some changes. Put them in the comments sections too so others can learn from what you did and we can all learn as our, our community of dog lovers. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Tune in again. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. You know, hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell button so you're notified when other videos come out, which variety, weekly, monthly, put about all different types. And if you'd like to see something specific, please put that in the comments too. Maybe you want me to make something that you'd like to see and I'd be glad to take those under consideration and maybe make them for you. Okay, bye-bye now. <laughs>